I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the broadcast this week. This is the Covenant Living Broadcast. I'm David Weeder. This is David Wright. Notice we're both DWs today. There's got to be something to that. I'm not sure. But <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us today. Make that cup of coffee. Pull your chair up to the table here. We're going to get into some wonderful things. We're going to continue our series this week on communication. And uh, if you haven't done so yet, go on our website or our YouTube channel, go back, start at the very first one and, and just work your way up. Cause we have, David, this has been so rich mm -hmm. and so powerful. Yes. And it's, it's one of those things that is, it's going to be so impactful in yes. people's lives. You know, if, it's, if you've been around this ministry very long at all, we're all about real. You know, how does this, how do you take the Word of God and apply it in real life every day? Well, hey, that's what this entire series is about. And so you share these, share these messages. It's, you know, used to, back in the day, <laughs> <laughs> you had to actually go to the effort of copying cassette tapes oh, yeah. and handing them out to friends and all that kind of stuff. And today we're blessed. I mean, you just hit that share button. That's right. You know, copy and share, but it, it's, it's, people hesitate to do it. Well, don't hesitate. Just do it. <laughs> get this message out. Praise God. Hey, let's have a word of prayer. And then we're going to get into today's teaching on communication. Father, we thank you for all of the rich and powerful things that you are, are showing us, yes. that you are allowing us the privilege of teaching to your people. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for then taking it even above and beyond that and ministering to each individual heart and mind exactly what you would have them receive because you know what they need in their lives. It may be a relational uh, situation with their children. It may be something on the job. It may be a marriage thing. It may be whatever. But you know what they need, and you know how to minister it to them. And so I'm asking you to do that, sir, through the anointing, through your power. We thank you for it. We praise you for every life changed and impacted throughout this world today, and we give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you again for joining us. This is a, so, man, ah, this is a good time. Yes, it is. In the, in the good word of God. Amen. Well, we're going to start with our foundation scripture and found in Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 28, and this is in the Amplified Classic Bible. The mind of the uncompromisingly righteous studies how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. So the really, the thing I wanted to impress you about in this scripture is that it specifically tells us to apply our minds to study communication. That's right. And we saw the reasons for that in Ephesians chapter 4 and then in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, be all things to all people. Well, the reason for studying communication is so that you can take the things that Ephesians chapter 4 instructs us to do and take it to the various groups of people so that we can minister to all, yeah. all groups of people. You know, whether it's youth versus elderly or this culture versus that culture, this ethnicity yeah. <laughs> or that one. I, you know, got my tongue wrapped around my eye teeth, didn't know what I was about to say. Anyway, that's an old one. That's a really, and then I didn't even, and I even messed it up with that because it's supposed <laughs> to be, I got my tongue wrapped around my eye teeth and couldn't see what yes. I was about to say. Right. And I messed it up all the way around. Hey, it's not the first time, won't be the last time. You do it too, you do it too. Don't try to act like you don't. So anyway, it's applying the mind, not just hearing from the Spirit. It is hearing from the Spirit. It is. But you have to process these things through the mind. Thank right. God, since Jesus came, we have access to the mind of Christ. Yes. An anointed mind to take what the Holy Spirit shows us, study 
the different avenues that the Lord gets us this information and then apply it to the yes. groups of people that we're teaching and instructing and communicating with. So I, this is what we're really focusing on today, but what you said is true is because um, our mind is the bridge between the spirit yes. and the physical. Yes. And so as we process things, meditate, we hear from the Lord, the Holy Spirit speaks to us, and we process the Word of God like we're talking about here mm -hmm. and, and on communication and meditate on it and declare it. It comes us up in us so we can express it outwardly mm -hmm. through our physical being. Right. And so that our mind, uh, Tom Ziegler, one of my friends, he says this, he goes, what, feed your, what you feed your mind becomes your appetite. Mm, yeah, that's good. So that's yeah. true. Like, I feed my body chocolate because I like chocolate, you know, <laughs> and I'm trying not to do that. Dark chocolate's good for yeah, you. That's right. So, that's right. Yeah, so absolutely. that's what I use. But um, the point is, and, and Scripture talks about this, is when we're feeding ourselves the Word of God, it renews our mind in a yes, way. Yes, 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 yes. That does. opens up that reservoir of possibility, opportunity, talent, creativity, that God, all the potential that God's put within our mm -hmm. spirit is open to flow through us in. I'm glad you brought that up. Let's turn over there to Romans chapter 12, just really quick, <clears throat> because a lot of Christians really don't think you should do much with your mind. <laughs> and, that's, and, and that's just not true. Romans chapter 12 and I'll go ahead and read down into it from verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, yes. that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed yes. to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So right there it says that it comes through the mind and it has to be renewed. Renewed. And the renewing comes from studying the Word. Yes. And it comes from studying God-inspired, God-anointed yes. teachers that teach along these subjects. Exactly. Because God uses different personalities, different communication styles to resonate with different people. All things to all men. You That's get right. it? So you may read a book from this person and it may be scriptural. It may be, you know, foundational and, and correct and good and everything. And you not get a thing out of it because of the way it's written or presented right. or whatever. You may read this book over here that says the same thing in a different way. Exactly. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's what that means. Well, and, but it's by the renewing of your mind. Exactly. And part of it, I just taught on this for our church. And uh, that word conform there means that you're made like something else. So that you're an identical replica of something. You've right. kind of been cloned, so right. to speak. Well, that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to be like the world system in our thinking and our communicating. Right, absolutely. But that word transform there means to take something and make it new so, so it functions from its pristine state, that place of perfection and power that God created us to function. Glory to from. God. Yeah. And once our mind is renewed, look what it says we're supposed to be conformed to. Just a couple chapters earlier in chapter Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. Yeah. For whom he did foreknow that he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Of his son. So we're not supposed to be conformed to the image of the world. world. That's all right. That's the world's way of thinking, the world's way of communication, manipulation and deceit and things like that. No, 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 no. But by the renewing of our mind, by the Holy Ghost, by the Word of God, and by the Word of God through 
anointed teachers yes. on teaching on these items, then our mind is renewed to the point where we're conformed to the image of Jesus. Yes. That's the way this yeah. works, brother. Glory to God. And, and which goes over to one of the things I wanted to share today is about the power of our words, the power of the word. So let me go to Acts go 19 ahead. and go set, th set this right. up. Set this up because as we were preparing for this uh, met this broadcast, the Lord brought this up to me. You know, a lot of people may be thinking, oh, I, I, you're supposed to be teaching on faith. <laughs> you're, you're a word of faith person. You're supposed to be teaching on faith. Well, let me show you about this. In Acts chapter 19 and beginning in verse 8, and he, Paul, went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Okay, so for there for three months, he was communicating. Yeah, boldly. Disputing, I'll get to in just a moment, but the persuading is getting people to come into agreement, agreement. on things. All right, keep reading verse 9. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spoke evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them. He didn't, he didn't like cause a big ruckus or anything. He just departed from them, separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years. Yes. So that all they that dwelled in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Go back up. That word disputing, if you look that up, it means to say thoroughly. Yeah. To preach. To lay forth. Yeah. To relate in words of systematic or set discourse. Yeah. Don't tell me communication is not important. That's right. Because look what happened next. This continued by the space of two years so that all they which dwelled in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks, and that's a connector because of verse 10, verse 11 happened. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. The Word of God was effectively, effectually communicated, yes. laid out clearly and plainly, and it brought faith, Romans 10, 17, it brought faith and the power was produced for God to wrought special miracles. That's it. And David, the, what's so great there is Sometimes we read that and we think, oh, he was arguing with people. No, exactly, exactly. That's, not, yeah. that's, not, that's why we have to dig into what does that word mean? Yes. And, yes. and that's, I'm, I'm going to go off grid here just a little bit, but that's why a lot of times when people, I'm talking with someone and they say something to me, I don't assume I understand what they're saying. Mm. I would go, if you shared something with me and I'd go, can you give me more context around that? Well, how do you define that? Mm. What's your definition of that? Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, your definition, while it may be similar to mine, it's got a little nuance mm -hmm. based on who yep. you are and your experience. And I need to know yep. that if I'm truly going to understand you, I need that clarity. Well, what Paul was doing there, like you said, was bringing clarity. Mm -hmm. And there's three um, characteristics of communication that uh, is happening there. Okay. First is eyes to see. Okay. And so what happens in our mind when we're hearing something is we see it. We start getting a visual of it in some way. Mm -hmm. And so I pray all the time, God, give me the eyes to see. And then ears to hear. Not only do I need to see it, I need to hear it in a way that it begins to Makes sense. So Paul, what he was doing there for those two years, he kept laying it out and bringing clarity so they could see it, uh, focus, clarity so they could hear it. And then the third characteristic is a heart to understand. And the Holy Spirit begins to take what we're seeing and hearing and bring revelation to us so we understand it and we can go implement it. 
through the mind of Christ, through the mind of Christ, we can apply what we have learned about communication yes. and implement it to all people. Yes. And so it's not about just hearing and understanding. It's about implementing. Mm -hmm. That's why God wants us to understand and hear the word so we can go out and share it with others. Absolutely. And communicate it to them in a way that they'll hear it. You know, an illustration that I, I heard one time is just really, it really kind of drives it home. You know, if you get up in front of somebody and you say, dog, well, in your mind, <laughs> you may be thinking a little black and white, three and a half pound chihuahua. In their mind, they grew up with a Rottweiler that was black and tan. This person's mind over here, they grew up with a, a blue healer. So you've got, you said dog, but you've got three totally different totally concepts, concepts. That's of right. what's being talked about. Yeah. But if you say big, hairy, black sheepdog, now you start narrowing that picture down exactly. so that you're closer to the same page. Yeah. Where we get into trouble, that's kind of an obvious example. You know, you're like, well, of course you're gonna have to describe a dog or whatever. Where we get into trouble though, is when we're trying to communicate ideas. Exactly. Or thoughts, because they're not as tangible. We're not used to describing them in detail. We just are used to assuming, well, that's, doesn't everybody think that way? <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't. Is that, is that a good, no, illustration that, that's true. That's a great illustration. And, and that's a part of learning to communicate well is being able to do it in a way that the other person, that's what Paul was doing, what you just read. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is such a great passage on this is he had a lot of different people sitting in that room. And I'm sure some of them that were more bet toward his personality type, they got it a lot quicker right. than everybody else. Yeah. But he took the time to keep pouring into each one of those in that room till they got it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it says, and God started doing great things yes. there. Yeah. I'm they paraphrasing, yeah. yeah. But, um, and that's it. When that group got, all got it and they all came together as one, my gosh, that opened the heavens for God to pour out blessings in a way that before it, it wasn't, he didn't want to do it. He was limited by the communication yeah. and understanding. Now they were able to come into a place of unity and agreement. Yes. And where two are together, Jesus is right there in the midst to yeah. do whatever is yeah. needed done. Well, and it, I go back to, to, there's an example I use a lot back in uh, uh, the Old Testament when they when they dedicated the temple, they all came as one. And when they did, the power of God manifested itself in a way the priests couldn't stand. Mm -hmm. They were basically slain in the spirit. You know? Well, even, even, even looking at it in the, the negative point of view, look at the Tower of Babel. Yeah. You know, um, these were ungodly people, you know, but... They were all of one language and they were, it was more than just language. Yeah. They were in communication. And they were in they agreement. They understood and they were yes. in agreement. And God said, listen to me now. Yeah. Their desire was to build a tower to reach heaven. Yeah. And God said <laughs> that it's possible. Yeah. These people were in communication and agreement and unity, and he said, nothing's going to stop them unless we get them out of communication. Right. Out of agreement, out of yeah. knowing so each they other. So understand. For the connections. Yeah. Oh, man. Man. Yeah. Golly. I just read that. Hey, are y'all listening? <laughs> I, I just read that passage the other day, the same thing, reading it again. I don't know how many times I've read it. But again, it was like, that was, it was possible. And that's the power of communication. That's the power of communication. And this in Acts 19 is the power. Right. 
Well, and that's what the the of communicating the word I wanted to bring up here. Uh, and I said this in our last session, but our words are filled with creative power and potential. Yes, sir. And that's why, and, and we've heard, especially in our circles, we've heard this preached and preached and preached, right. but we will go on hearing it. In, in Mark 11 there, Yeah. and I'm going to play with this a little bit. I'm reading from the Amplified, but it says, and Jesus replying said, I'm going to replace that word said, and Jesus replying communicated to them, mm -hmm. have faith in God constantly. Now he's he's teaching them something here. He's he's uh, charging them with something, challenging them with something here. Mm -hmm. And he goes, truly, I'm not playing with you now. Right? Listen yeah. To me. Yeah. Truly, I tell you, whoever again communicates to this mountain. Mm -hmm be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes what he says will take place, it will be done for him. Mm -hmm. That right there, he's speaking to the power of the word that God put in within all of us. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me, uh, I've got it here on my phone here, Isaiah 55, 11. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So shall yes. my word be that yes. goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect. Absolutely. It won't be useless. Right. And the Lord is saying, these words mean something. They have intention. They have a purpose. They are powerful. So do our words. Mm -hmm. And we aren't taught this as kids growing up, but our words are powerful. Absolutely, yeah. And, and we had that, and let me finish this verse here. And it says, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. I've, I've taken that verse and made it personal. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things I declare all the time that my word that goes out of my mouth is not going to return void. Mm -hmm. And so. Absolutely. The power, which is the whole purpose of Mark 11. Yeah. And which is what Mark 11 talks about. It's what you just read there that, that Paul, it, that was, that's a great example mm -hmm. of what we're to do uh, with those around us. Glory to God. I mean, it's, this just gets gooder and gooder and gooder. I'm telling you, <laughs> I am so excited. I'm already looking forward to next week. Come on. But before we look forward to next week, don't go anywhere. Cause I really do want you to watch this. I spent five years at a girls' uh, correctional facility, there was, and then three additional years working for the government in the inner city of Nashville, Tennessee. And I was in the emergency child protective services unit. And I realized God was starting to put a dream on the inside of my heart because I knew that apart from Christ, there was no such thing as a life that could be changed. And finally, one day, I just heard the Lord speak to my heart. You've spent five years dealing with angry teenage girls, and now I'm taking you back in time and showing you what happened to them and why they're so angry. The three things that God's showed me to do, take young women in free of charge. They need to know that your love is pure, that you're not trying to make money off their problem. Secondly, God showed me your needs will be met through your giving, and I want you to give at least 10% of what comes into your ministry to other ministries and offerings when I tell you, and I will touch the hearts of people to become monthly partners or to, and to give offerings. And the third thing God showed me is I don't want you to ever take state or government funding or any other money with strings on it where they come in and say, you don't have the freedom to share Christ. Because without that freedom, the lives will not change. I was very obsessed with not feeling any emotion. When I started the suicidal phase in my life. When I was in third grade, I was molested at a sleepover at my friend's house. Um, I tried my first line of cocaine and became addicted from that point on. I ended up getting pregnant, and due to my alcohol addiction, I did lose the baby. This was all life was, like I was done with it. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Whether they're addicts, eating disorders, sexually abused, sex traffic, it does not matter what the problem is. Jesus Christ is the answer. His name is above every name that can be named.
When I first started in 1983, I remember feeling really excited. And I made the drive about eight hours or so there, eight and a half. And I prayed all the way there. I got there. And, and so I raised up a program director. I was there for seven years in Louisiana, came back to Nashville to open what was the second home. Then a few years later, we built uh, our three-story office building on the same property. Uh, after that, we added a home in St. Louis, Missouri, Sacramento, California, started international locations in the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Canada. We own property in the Panhandle of Florida. We plan on building a home there. And I have visions for other cities in the United States and other countries as well. But there's so many great things that are going on through the lives of the girls. I mean, literally, God is multiplying his, himself through the outreaches, all the things that these young women are doing in the United States and beyond. And really, mercy multiplied is a more accurate description of what's happening because all these years later, since 1983, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of young women that are out there doing great things because of what they experienced and the change that Christ did. He gave them a new heart and a new spirit, a new vision for their life, new purpose. It's a perfect description of what God does at Mercy every day, mercy multiplied. I think God's vision is just continued growth, continued expansion more outreach programs like our, our Keys to Freedom study, which is to equip churches, to educate leaders, and us continuing to raise up more and more leaders from all the generations just so we can just see a perpetuation of what we're already doing continue. We're not done. We're just getting started. Wow. I'm telling you, I... I just hardly ever get tired of watching that segment. I, it just, the impact mm. on these young women's lives is indescribable. But I'm reminded, you know, you were, we were talking about the word and we were talking about communication and you have to understand it, but you have to implement it. That's right. And the, the phrase comes back to me, actions speak louder than words. Hey, now's the time for you to communicate through your actions. Yes. Roe versus Wade is history. And the church was griping and complaining about that for years. Now's the time to step up and put our money yes. where our mouth was and help these young ladies. Unfortunately, a lot of religious people, especially religious people, big on talk, not too much on action. Well, mercy multiplied is big on action. And you need to get in there and put your action with their action and combine forces and let's minister love and grace and God to these young women. Praise God. Why? Because God loves them. He loves you. He's never ever against them or you. He's always for you. And Jesus is Lord. Thank you, partners and friends, for helping make this broadcast possible. For more information about our ministry, contact us at davidweeder.org or call us at 1-800-988-5380.